the day after the exam, I said, I think for some reason the number 278 is in my head. I ended up getting a 279, which is just a really weird thing. Um, I don't know why I thought that or what, but it was like for some reason 278. I think I got a 278. And sure enough, it was one point higher than that. So it was kind of crazy. Well, hey, everybody, welcome to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers, and we have a really fun interview lined up today. This is Joe Hastings, and Joe, you just found out that you passed the Georgia Bar Exam, right? Yes, and I could not be more happy about it. Yeah, your story is really a good one. This was not an easy just stroll by the bar and take it one day and pass, correct? Right. A lot of work, but it's over now. Happy. Yeah. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and what uh, led you to be in a position to take the Georgia Bar? Okay, so I graduated law school, and of course I went and got one of the big box bar reviews. Kind of just thought I could wing the bar. I studied some, but I didn't really put all my effort into it. And sure enough, I found out that I failed. And so, of course, I was really upset by that. Decided I'll take it again kept the same materials, tried to just review, but then I got to a point where I didn't think I was ready, almost didn't even go to the second sitting of the exam, but I already had paid, so I decided to go for it, and then I went, found out that I failed again, <clears throat> and this was all during basic training, so I, was, I took it, then I went to basic training with the Army, and then the last day of basic training, I got the results saying I failed a second time. So, of course, and then it was like the first time I'd seen my family in eight weeks, ten weeks, and it was that night, and then the next day I was getting sent to advanced training with the Army. Um, then I was there for a year at the advanced training, trying to decide if I wanted to take it again, what I was going to do. So eventually I decided I'll take it again. I found celebration and uh, ended up passing the third time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we thank you for your service. You're in active service in the Army. And, yes. Uh, so you were studying while you were uh, working, correct? Yes. So talk a little bit about what that process is like, because a lot of people aren't necessarily in the military, but they've got full-time jobs, and your job, I'm sure, was demanding. So how did you balance the study with uh, the other commitments that you had? I think it was just trying to stay disciplined and set a time when I was going to study. Um, I was actually on night shift, and so it was. I'd be studying on my lunch at you know three in the morning, you know, and then on my off days. That's why I got those emails at three a.m. Is that the reason? Yeah, exactly. So okay. my my three a.m. was that's okay. my normal day, or was okay. back then. Okay. That was my lunchtime. I'm up and at them, ready to go, and everyone else is asleep. And um, so yeah, I, I did that, and then I'd have off days. It'd be like four days on, three days off. And those three days, I would be on the same sleep schedule where I'd be sleeping during the day and up at night. But then I would put in, you know, a lot more hours on those off days to study. Just try to stick to the syllabus, uh, send in the work and make it happen. Yeah. How, when did you start studying with us? Uh, you took the July and passed the July 2017 exam. When did you begin your studies with us? I think I signed up in March. Okay. I want to say I didn't start studying significantly until maybe end of March, mid-April. Um, now, May, towards the end of May is when I really buckled down and started studying heavily. Right, right. And what was it about Celebration Bar Review that made it an appealing choice to you when you were thinking about it, making a switch from the big box bar review? I mean, to be honest, the most appealing thing that happened at first was seeing the videos of successful takers especially for the state of Georgia. Um, that gave me a lot of confidence. I wanted something new and I wanted to start something fresh. I've been out of law school for almost two years and I've been at all this training. I wasn't in the legal, like the framework of law school or having that, you know, that mindset. I was in a totally different place in my life. So I wanted something that would start me out a little slow, something different. I could kind of build up uh, to the different things, a fresh style, a fresh approach. Yeah. And yeah. celebration seemed like that. Good. Now, when you started working with me, I think it's safe to say that you were pretty discouraged about what had happened to you previously. Can you talk a little bit about that? I think it wasn't even discouraged. It was it was almost like I didn't even think that this was the right path for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was almost like it wasn't that I'd given up. I just had decided maybe this wasn't what I was you know supposed to do. Um, but I put so much work in, I didn't want to just, you know, 
quit, especially when I didn't think I put my best foot forward the first two times. But regardless of how I felt about that, it's still in the back of your mind that you fail twice. You know, and we all know how long it is to wait, especially for Georgia, and then yeah. to take it, study, wait three months, find out you failed, then, you know, all of a sudden a year and a half is gone, and you're just like, what do I do? I mean, my, I need to move on with my life. I need to do something with my career. Um, and so, yeah, I was, I was definitely in a state of confusion, of not sure what, what to do or who to turn to. Um, but then I just decided to go with celebration and yeah. see if it would make it happen for me. Cool. And you chose our personal coaching plan, which meant that you and I were talking about your work as you went along. Uh, people sometimes ask what those conferences are like. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I, I want to tell the truth. Uh, sometimes they're rough. Uh, you and I had some, some challenging conversations, I'm sure, along the way for you. Um, uh, you know, you want to talk a little bit about that, what that was like? Yeah. So, I mean, to me, the, I, w I started out like, I mean, I started out okay. And then, um, you kind of showed me the way you wanted me to write. And I think for maybe like a week or two, I tried to do it. And then there was one, there was one time I remember specifically when I kind of reverted back to Iraq and I had looked at um, model answers on the Georgia Bar website. Right. Um, and it was a mixture of me getting scared and, you know, of the unknown and not doing what I was told to do previously, even though it didn't really help me before. And if you remember, I know you have other students and everything, but I remember it clearly as that being a turning point for me was that yeah. conversation. Yeah, I remember um, the call. And once that happened, one, it gave me confidence in you because I don't want someone telling me I'm doing good. I want someone to help me get better. And the fact that you, you know, let me know in a stern way that this wasn't good enough, this was going to be a failing answer. To me, it gave me more confidence because I'm like, look, this guy's really reading my stuff and he's saying, look, this isn't going to be good enough. You know, I wanted someone to tell me that. I wanted someone to help me get better, not someone to be like, oh, you're doing fine, son. You know, good job. Like, <laughs> I wanted yeah. someone to help me improve. Yeah, I didn't think you were the kind of guy that wanted smoke blown at him. Uh, yeah. And 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 frankly, I could tell already you were teachable. You wanted to do things the right way. Right. And I think it's a natural reaction, and, and that's why I wanted to ask about it, because I think this fear that seeps in sometimes, you start to get into things, and then you start saying, well, what if, or should I take a look at, or, you know, how about, you know, what are my friends saying, or what's on the internet, or something right. else? And it can be really distracting, can it? And really, it, it's and you, I mean, you talked about it during that time about task avoidance. Yeah, it was almost it was it was that with me. Um, I never was angry or anything. I, it almost was as if I wanted it so bad I was trying too hard. Yeah. And so once I that turning point happened where I was just like, look, just let that go, just trust the process, and you'll be all right. Yeah, and I think that once you had that turning point, and that call was, in my view, the turning point, your mm -hmm. work got steadily better and your confidence grew. Now, mm -hmm. you used a couple of the tools that we offer. One of them is photo reading. Uh, can you talk a little bit about photo reading and, and how you used it? Yeah, um, so the last guy you interviewed, was it named Andrew, I think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He, his summary of it was spot on. Yeah. I mean, I, I listened to it. I don't think I can explain it much better than that. So <laughs> I, I definitely agree with, his take on it. Um, I will just say briefly that it's, first of all, I know whenever you look into it, you're going to think it's like some gimmick or, you know, and I get that it's skeptical. It's easy to be skeptical at first when you see that um, you just have to try it and practice it. And then you'll see a difference and it'll be, to me, it's something, it just improves instincts that we already have um, that we don't trust enough. And then it's yeah. it's like a feeling in your stomach where you know the answer is right. Right. For some reason, you don't know why it's right, but it's right. And it allowed you to get through the material faster too, didn't it? Right. That's one thing today I wanted to say was I did not read one thing consciously. Right. The entire time. I didn't. I didn't read one outline like you know reading left to right. Yeah. Yeah. And no I'm conscious score reading. Went up Thirty points. Yeah. Nope. Your score went up how much? Thirty-one points. Yeah. There you go. Okay. And you didn't read consciously left to right. You photo read everything, right. but it gave you the opportunity to photo read outlines multiple times. Correct. Right. And I would sit there. That, that's what I would do predominantly at work on my lunch. I would photo read probably a, an outline 10 times. That's what I would do on my lunches. Mm -hmm. um, I would work on questions too, but predominantly I wanted to put the work in photo reading to build up that the instinct and the non-conscious mind and all of that. 
Right. And again, you were teachable. I mean, you went into it with a healthy degree of skepticism, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But then you were open to the idea that it could be working. And as you began to see your results change and your work change, I think you gained more confidence in the, the approach. Mm -hmm. And you were all in. I mean, by the time of the exam, there's no doubt you were all in. You were, you were yeah. doing that. The, the other tool that you used were the paraliminal recordings, right. correct? And right. can you talk a little bit about that and how you use those? Yeah. If anyone out there is considering those, I say, like, get them early and start getting used to them. Start figuring out what you like, what helps the most. I kind of was late to the party on that one, maybe halfway through. Yeah. Um, but I listen to them every every morning, every study break. I would listen at night to help me sleep. Um, there's like three. I know there's like 16 or something with mm -hmm. the pack that you sell, but yeah. I focus on like three and four of them. Um, to me, they just got my my mind settled down I could focus. Um, it was almost like a stress relief and you kind of got a calming sense about you after listening to them. Um, and so I, I listened to them the day of the exam mm -hmm. and the, the next day that the mornings before the, I went into the examination site, which, which, which paralympic recording do you remember which one you used? Um, the, the focus one. Yeah. Um, I can't remember that. There's like two or three I would cycle through. Okay. Um, can't remember what the what the two other okay. two are. Did you use the the ten minute supercharger? Yeah, I did that when I was studying. Yeah, I would do I would do that one when I was studying. That would be a good little pick me up. Good, good. And so here are all these different techniques and forms. And of course, so think about it. We're talking about changing your writing style. We're right. changing your reading style. We're changing your mental focus and picture with the paraliminals. Uh, we're pretty much changing everything you're doing. And on the multi state. We're even changing that right to a yep. more intuitive way to answer right. questions. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So on the MBE, on both sessions, I was done. I think it was two hours and fifteen minutes on both of them. So I was <laughs> sitting there. It might have been a little quicker than that. Yeah. But, wait. Just just again for clarity for people. That's a hundred questions in two hours, fifteen or less, yeah, instead of three hours. hours. Yeah. And when you had taken the exam before, how long had it taken you to get through the? I mean, was, I, I took the full time. I mean, and I was I had left questions blank. I would go back and try to rethink it. And um, I mean, I was right there. I think the second time I took the exam, I actually had to bubble in the last eight because I just ran out of time. Um, but this time, yeah, I mean, I would do twenty five questions. We talked about this before I went in there. Yeah. I did twenty five, and then I would either go to the bathroom or just take a one minute breather and you know, reset my mind. And with those breaks in, I still did it in two hours. Right. We actually scheduled your multi-state kind of like a rate, like a NASCAR race. There's a scheduled yeah. pit stop every 25 questions. And you knew that you were gonna have enough time that you could do that, get right. to the end of 25. If you wanted to take a bathroom break, stretch, just kind of clear your brain, or just yeah. put your head down or just close your eyes for that moment. Then mm -hmm. you had, as it turns out, plenty of time to do all of that. And the reason is that you weren't trying to wrestle with each question, right? You weren't trying to eliminate wrong answers and memorize elements and do all that craziness. Right? Didn't do anything like that. And it, it would have been impossible to because I hadn't studied that way. Yeah. Um, and so I would read the question. I would think, it's like Andrew said as well, he would think of an answer um, that he thinks should be the answer. If it's there, mark it and move on. If it's not the one that's closest to it, I marked it and moved on. And that's yeah. what I did. I didn't go back to any questions. I just got done. I had an hour left and of course I was stressed out. I was like, there's an hour, people are still frantically doing their tests and I'm sitting there just twiddling my thumbs, looking around. You know, I, I went to the bathroom like four times. They probably <laughs> thought I was like or something. Yeah, but, I mean, in I Georgia, you stuff. know, who knows, right? Yeah, um, that's awesome. That is beautiful. Well, let's talk a little bit about what it's like to take the bar exam in Georgia. Um, it's always kind of interesting for people to hear what each jurisdiction is like. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about the, the setup there? Yeah, it's in the Atlanta airport, and so there's like a big um, conference room center, and you hear the airplanes going over every few seconds. All 2,000 or 2,500 of us or whatever it is are in there in this big room. Yeah, it's all. It's what's funny is that it's very military. It's you know very rigid, and so it's, I felt right at home. So it was like stand here, walk forward. Like I was like, okay, uh, I'm cool with it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everyone else is kind of stressed out. I'm just like, look, just tell me where to go. I'll sit down. Right. Right. Yeah, it's a big room, and it's a, it is, I think, one of the weirdest environments to take the exam in. Yeah. 
um, and uh, two days of exams. And, mm-hmm. and Georgia is a, an incredibly difficult test. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt about it. It's a lot of subjects that are potentially testable. Right. Um, the Georgia examiners have been notoriously difficult over the years. Um, and so, you know, there you are, and you're back in for the third time. Right. Um, you said you used the paraliminals on the day of the exam. What yep. were you feeling going into the, the actual test days? I mean, it's night and day difference from the last two times because I finished the study plan this time around. I was done with like, you know, two weeks, I think, and I was just yeah. doing study questions and yeah. trying to refine my writing. Um, so I walked in. I remember going to lunch with my family like two days before, and they asked how I felt. And I was like, I feel good. I mean, I'm done studying. I've, I've done all I can. I feel good about my chances. Um, I had prepared really well, and so I felt confident. Of course, in the back of my mind, there's the lingering thought of, you failed twice, you know, can you improve 20 points? Are you going to be that prepared? Is it going to be that big of a jump? Which, you know, that crept into my mind a little bit, but I remember the difference was, so you're waiting in the lobby to go into the room, the big conference room, and I walked straight to the front of the door and waited. I was the first one in the exam site. Wow. Because in my mind, I decided I need to go attack it. I don't need to be afraid back here in the back with all these people. So I went to the front. As soon as it was open, I walked in, sat down, I was ready to go. That makes my heart happy. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And a 31, in, uh, and so you wanted 20 points. You needed 20 or 21, I think. And you right. got 31. Yes. I mean, like, you know, your head explodes. Um, but then, of course, Georgia has this ridiculously long period between the exam and the results coming out. Can you talk a little bit about what that was like during the, the waiting period? I mean, I was relieved. Once it was over, I was like, I was almost happy that I had to wait a while because I was just so uh, invested in the whole process and I just needed a, a time away from it a little bit. As it got closer and like results started trickling in from other jurisdictions, it's got to, you know, got to the point where I was like, oh, here it comes. Like it's getting serious now. And the weight of it all, you know, especially when we got into October, and I could see that, you know, it's this month I'll find out. It got really, really heavy. Um, and it was a painful, painful wait to get the passing result. Yeah. Now, on the day that results came out, you had things going on in other parts of your life as well, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> the way the Army works to get promoted, you have to go to boards where uh, they test you, your uniform, your facing movements, your marching, um, just general military questions. And in there, there will be the sergeant major and then the first sergeants from each company and your battalion. I know people probably don't understand what that means, but it's just a lot of the higher ranking um, soldiers that test you. And it's a very, very stressful process for people. Um, it was stressful for me, even though I'm, you know, I'm a little older and I've been through a little bit more than some other soldiers have been. But I only got a week notice, a week's notice that I was going to this board. Wow. I didn't, it was my first board I was eligible for. I didn't think they'd send me, found out they're sending me. And lo and behold, it's the same day results come out. <laughs> but so hey, was, there's no pressure in your life that day, right? I and I was, I remember I was just physically sick because I was so stressed out. Yeah. But, um, so I had to read a 112 page study guide for this board. Had to get my dress uniform ready to go. Um, I had to do all this stuff the, you know, the week of the exam results. And I, I thought they could come out early. And so I was like, what if I got bad news on Thursday and I have the, the board on Friday and they know I was taking the ball, they're going to ask me about it. So it was just a stressful week. Um, I ended up passing the board. So congratulations. Thank you. And then I, I had to go out. I changed. I saw that results that were out. And so I was sitting there in my Jeep, just sitting you know, after that stressful situation in the board, knowing that, okay, now I got to check for my results. And so I was, I was, I was sweating. I was nervous. I was almost confident, but still, it was still nerve wracking. Um, and I tried to check and the site kept crashing. And so there's like different forums that you can check where people are talking about yeah, right. the results. And so I went to the forums and someone had sent a, a PDF to the thread of the list. <laughs> and so I checked that and I was like, I'll just check this. I'll get it over with. But the, the the file was in a format, like the list was in a format I'd never seen before. I was like, is this even real? Is it someone just, you know, make this and send it in? And so I went to my name and I found my name. And I was like, well, there's my name, but is this the real list? And so I, I spent like 30 more minutes trying to get onto the Georgia site. And then I finally got on there and found out that I'd passed. Yeah, so it's legit. <laughs> uh, wow, what a day that must have been. You must have just been... Uh, 
not only excited but exhausted. Yeah, it was just overwhelming. It was a very eventful day. I mean, it, I can't understate it. It was just, it was a lot going on, a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. Yeah. yeah. And that, uh, that's awesome. It ended well though. That's awesome. And what did your family have to say about all this? Well, it's funny. My wife, she works as a teacher on the post I work at. Yeah. So I found out and I told her I was still, I, I was made her under the impression that I didn't know yet. And so I went to her school and just walked to her classroom and let her know that I had passed. Oh, wow. And so she was, she was actually out of her classroom. And then I turned around and she was walking back towards her classroom and saw me sitting there in like my army PT outfit. And I just screamed, I passed down this hallway of like second graders. <laughs> and then, uh, so she, she was happy. We talked there for a little bit and she told her teacher friends, they all came out from this second grade hallway, like celebrating. <clears throat> it was pretty funny. That's great. Oh man, that's a, what a great moment. I'm sure the second graders were pretty excited too, even though they don't know what the bar exam yeah, is. Yeah. It's the of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm really pleased for you, Joe. This is, um, really the culmination of so much effort and you were a great student. You really did take to heart what we asked you to do and you were intelligent and thoughtful about it. We had great conversations. It was a lot of fun to work with you because you asked such good questions. You were just, you know, sort of rotely doing things. You were actually saying, well, why are we doing this? And then you'd understand it and you'd go and do it. And um, I thought it was really incredible to watch your growth uh, both as a lawyer, uh, as a student, but just kind of your emotional journey as well, going from really being so disappointed and, and frustrated that you just hadn't been able to get over the hump um, to really being confident and going in. And I love that you were the first guy to walk in the room. That just, that that's the best of all. Um, what advice would you give somebody who's taken the exam in any state and failed uh, and is sort of now faced with being where you were a few months ago? I think the biggest thing for me was realizing results day will be here before you know it, regardless of how far away it seems. Um, you want to have good news on that results day. So start now, start trusting the process. I definitely wanted to talk about FLA though, because yeah, yeah let's um, talk about that. And, and by FLA, you're talking about the writing style that we teach, which is different yeah. than Iraq issue rule application right. conclusion. Yeah. Go ahead. Talk about that. The please. Thing to me, it's, it's, it achieves what IREC fails to achieve to me as far as simplifying the issues and the disputes. Um, but so as far as my score goes, the FLA is what saved me. I mean, I, I did that for every for the both MPTs and all four essays in each sub question of the essay at FLA, every single one. And FLA um, stands for fact law application. Yeah. So, okay. And so my essay score last time was I think a 125. This was it was a 151. Wow. On that say an MPT side, wow. my MBE went up like like 10 points mm -hmm. or eight points, something like that. But um, so I improved a little bit there. But to me, the big winner was changing my writing style. I mean, the you can't argue the proof of the score. I mean, it went from 125 to 151. Um, so people who are skeptical about that, don't be. It it cleans up your writing. It allows the grader to follow what you're thinking. And it, it shows you know what you're talking about. You know what's in dispute. You know what the like what they'll say. You may want to say what the issue is. I know you don't like that word, but it's the <laughs> to me. I mean, it saved me. That 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 writing style. I mean, I couldn't be more you know higher on it than I am right now because it saved my grade. That's great. I'm so glad. Um, you know, I, I I take a lot of heat for teaching a different writing style. Uh, somehow, when you tell the world that the earth is not flat. Uh, they're always the people that are convinced that you're going to fall off the edge. So uh, you may. I'm it. telling you, if someone's watching this video and they're skeptical, do not be skeptical. It's going to work. You just have to do it. Cool. I think that's a great place to stop. <laughs> I'm thrilled. Um, I am so pleased for you and, and so excited to see where your career leads and how you use your bar membership, uh, you know, in the Army and, and post-Army, if that's where your, your career takes yeah. you. Um, but again, you know, so appreciative that you would come alongside us and, and do this work and be uh, such a great student and of course uh, very grateful for your service to our country I appreciate and um, 
We just wish you all the, we wish you safety. We wish you good luck and, and wonderful things happening. Um, and thanks for taking the time to, to share your, your insights today. I know, as you said, you watched a lot of these videos before yeah. you got started. I know there are people out there watching this video going, oh my God. I know. Yeah. FLA, FLA, yeah. that's yeah. all I'm gonna say, you gotta and, do it. And I guess I wanna finish with one thought. In the middle of one of our hard conversations, I don't remember which one exactly, yeah. You and I talked about the importance of visualization. And I said, visualize the day when you're being interviewed by me because you passed the bar exam. Right. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and well, it's funny too, I sent you an email saying, I want to be one of those people. Yeah. I sent that really early on, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you are. <laughs> you yeah, are. Isn't that great? I mean, the it's power awesome. of visualization. So yeah. congratulations. The thing about that is, yeah. I had my entire wall full of, you're going to pass, be confident, all that stuff. To, Another thing that I think is important is the mindset, is being confident, believing you're going to pass. If you don't think you're going to pass, you probably won't. So you got to believe it. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, listen, congratulations again. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, and to uh, those of you in our audience, look, this is a great example. Joe is a terrific example of what can be done when you just put your head down, you do the work, you follow the directions. Uh, it works. And so, uh, you know, don't be discouraged and don't, don't give up. So, all right. Well, listen, we're going to say goodbye for today. We'll see you again next time with the next interview. And again, thanks and congratulations to you, Joe. Thanks so much, Jackson. I appreciate all your help. Bye-bye.